All right, so let's cover the Locrian scale real fast uh, because that's fun. And we want to have fun. <laughs> Not a pain in the neck. We want to have fun. Um, here's the Locrian. All right. Now remember, there's two sets of it because we got cage is going G, D, C, A, G. You know what I'm saying? These are overlapping. So we just show two instances of that. The Locrian is the Dorian plus these purple sevens. My, and you don't have to play, but it doesn't sound bad, minus the six. So the six goes to the seven. With the Dorian shapes, we get the Locrian. And that's it. Plus the seven equals half diminish. But what I didn't write here was minus the sixth. What we get, it, it, it should be half diminish seventh. So we get, not just, we get, so we get a four note Locrian seventh. Now remember, what's, what's a dominant seventh mode? Mixolydian, right? Well, Locrian's a dominant seventh mode too. But is, Aeoli is Ionian a dominant seventh? No. It's not. That would be the fifth of something else, or, you know, it would be the fifth of the key of F. Um, you know, or something else. So, that's what we got here now. We still haven't gotten to the caught up with this stuff, so we want to look at this now. So we have all cases here all cases we've got mixolydian phrygian dorian lydian what are these things here's here's uh ionian here's aeolian okay here's lydian and here's dorian and then locrian and then we have Mixolydian and Phrygian. Sorry for jumping around in the octaves there. So we have everything we need. And this is all on the violin. Now let's look at, aha, row one, column one. You know, but it's not, it's not a matrix. It's, it's just a group of fretboards. Now we're back to square one. All right, it took a little break there. All right, so we're getting up to the top of the hour, as I call it. I'm not sure if it's 50 minutes or whatever, but I don't have my violin yet, and I apologize for that, but um, when I get it, I'm going to be doing lessons on that, and so that'll be my fourth instrument. I play trumpet. I play... Uh, I can play trumpet on my lip is is not in shape. I haven't played it um, in a while. <laughs> but um, I play piano and I play uh, play with the guitar and now I'm adding violin. But I haven't got my violin yet. It's still on the way. I'm supposed to get it like uh, this week sometime. So let's just talk about the chart here. This is this is the first cage, and it's a double guitar cage in the violin. Now it is really a big, a little confusing if I start using this guitar to explain the chart, because I know how to explain the you know the chart with it. If you want to go five root three five like this, that would start five root, but then the three's got to be moved to the right. So it's five root three and then five. So it's not going to be in the same cage. It's going to be moving way up like that. Because the cage is defined, and it's a good point to read this, double cage shapes are defined by the bottom string as the normal cage shapes are defined by the bottom string. In my string shape theory, string String shape theory, yeah, it sounds like physics, but, but it's not. It has nothing to do with string theory in physics. Let's hope. So I put the modals here only for one reason. 
that this is a modal scale. G, A, okay, so it would be G, A minor, you step, G, A minor, uh, B minor, C, D, E, half diminished. Okay, let's try that one more time. G, A minor, C, now this should be uh, C minor, so um, there's, th these are guitar shapes, okay? But close enough, close enough. Um, there's that double C shape there. So that small C shape in piano would be, would be the B minor uh, half diminished shape kind of thing. And then going to the full C shape, the full D shape, but that's gonna be minor. The E minor shape, you know, we're not going to an E major, we're going to E minor. So doing this on the piano is, it's, it's, another, it's another factor. I don't use that system where, uh, you know, the old system I learned when I was a kid, um, where we're going to just add sharps and flats to any of the, of the keys. We just take for granted the second's going to be minor, the third's going to be minor, the fourth is going to be major, the fifth and we you know we've got these scale shapes here all from chart number 63 right what was that okay here remember chart 63 yeah a little while ago so those uh, that C minor D minor shape and then we have it for all the five shapes for the five shapes we have different things and you know we have this is what what that's all about right so we have C minor, D minor, second, E minor, second, and the E major shape. This is all done on guitar like this, so that's where that comes from. But it doesn't mean it can't, that, that it's not a musical relationship that we could use for the, um, for the violin. So that's why I put these here, because what is this? This is, it says it's the A shape because the bottom string of this particular piece of the fretboard, uh, of the of the fiddle board, the bottom string is the A string shape. So this is the this is the system I'm going to be using to teach this stuff. So same string shapes, okay, but they're going to be in fifths and they're going to be doubled. So they're double string shapes. I'm just calling this arbitrarily the A G string shape, okay. So starting from the A, we would have what we consider an A-shaped major, and I guess it's gonna look like this, root three, root five. This is your basic major shape, okay? And then we go up to the next cage over. Uh, the next cage is gonna be, uh, you know, basically the ED string shape, because there it is, the bottom string is the ED string shape. We've still got our, um, you know, our major scales here, uh, our triad rather, root three five, root three five root, that kind of thing. So it's going to be E shaped over here, obviously, and D shaped over here. But remember, we put them together. We're not looking at them separately anymore. So they do share the two. We're looking at it as one string shape because everything with uh, with the violin fiddle is going to be longer string shapes so we would do like uh, seven it would be like like that and then we'd start from the five here but I could start it again from down there and then we you know that kind of thing so we do the ed string shape we do the ag string shape now these guys over here these don't matter we're not looking at them right now i was <laughs> sorry i was this is this is it this is this is our man here this is our man this is the ed mr ed string shape here you know um it isn't it is an open string, okay? I don't know what position they would call it on the uh, violin, but this is it. This is the box. Now, notice the important thing about the violin string shapes: you have two string shapes per string, E D A G D.